Somebody got 911 on their phone. <laughs> hey, I've done this before. Keep, keep it in your speed dial. Yeah. There is another option. Uh, is it Wagman that do the power trial blades? Yeah. Yeah, Wagman. Wagman Metal Tools. They have an attachment that has four of these bristle heads that go underneath the power trial. So then you're not dicking around with electric and water. Everybody has a power trial, so you just put, the, put these on the bottom, fire it up, and that's going to give you that clean rotation. Now, a lot of guys don't use these for cleaning exposed aggregate. I use it for cleaning stamped concrete. 15 years as a contractor, never had a seal appeal failure. This is how I cleaned my stamped concrete. Because I'm getting every piece of that release powder and sterate pal off the surface before I want to get it. So I've always had at least three or four of these in my truck. Here we've got a medium broom. <coughs> this is a little stiffer. This is a Zim grip. This has little pieces of carbon in it. You could actually expose traditional concrete without a deactivator with that stuff. It's going to tear it up. It's more for profiling. The reality is, these are the two that we use on a regular basis. Light sand edge finishes, deeper etches. But this may get, if this was in the sun all day, I may end up going to this one to get this reveal off. There's no science to this. It's not like I could tell you do A, B, C, right? You've seen it's a process. So I think I'm gonna start with the medium bristle. So if I tilt this bag, can you throw me that medium one off? Absolutely, I'd love to. Now, why do I do this? Remember yesterday I mentioned that project I did that was 36 feet wide and three and a half miles long? Having a guy with a pressure washer and a four inch tip, that takes a long time. And when that guy's on his cell phone, the same guy that kind of gave me the electric shock, <laughs> he's going closer and further away and you see stripes. And if you don't cross hatch it and go in different directions, so again, your labor could make this look terrible. This, I can have any of you guys come up and run this and you're gonna get the same finish. With a power washer, you're hitting this, you're only cleaning from this side or maybe this side. This is spinning all the way around. You've got brushes, so you're going to clean that aggregate. The reveal and the sand is going to be much clearer, cleaner, and it's five times quicker. I was covering five times the area than my guys that were running with a pressure washer. So this gave me production. Tonight I'm feeling mean, I'm feeling mean. Tonight I'm feeling mean, I'm feeling mean. Tonight I'm feeling me, gonna make an ugly scene. Tonight I'm feeling me, I'm feeling me. Tonight I'm gonna pick myself a fight. If someday serving. Vegas with Teresa and putting the activator on too late, Mike. This is one aggressive bag. Yeah. I'm scared. Hey, you're gonna you try it, try on the sample, right?
don't get that spalding. Now you can just grab it. Yeah, just pull it back, man. Pull it out. It's not gonna spalled on you. Ooh, All those franches and chips. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All the different sales reps that we have here. I know that we've kind of got everybody, but we got Teresa. What's your territory? You're covering Arizona, Las Vegas, and all of Southern California. Got Mike Ward over here. I've got a small Mike part Florida. of northeastern New Mexico, North Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and northern Louisiana. Mark Harrington. Yeah, northern California and Reno, Tahoe. Okay. Todd White. All over. He's all over the place. That's cool. Todd's up. Grand. Todd's up in my neck of the woods, which is fun. Uh, who else we got? I know Brandon. we got Brandon. Brandon Langford, your territory. Southern the world. Texas. Yeah, that's right. Southern <laughs> Texas, Southern Louisiana. Southern the Texas. World, as I said, the world. And the world. Mike. our boy Mike. Mike, Colorado, New Mexico, Wyoming. Whoa, 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 whoa. Matt, what's that? Matt's right here. Tennessee. Tennessee. So yeah, we got a wide variety. Right Oh, Javier, sorry, right you blended in, man. You're in California. <laughs> yeah, right? Southeast U.S., Mexico, Caribbean. Right on. Nice. Yeah, these guys are all great people. We all, uh, we're having a blast at this. So if you get a chance, you got any questions, pull these guys aside. Uh, I'm going to highlight, you know, we got Raul, a, a, a distributor we got a great relationship with. He'll tell you ins and outs of kind of what's been working for him. Contractor-wise, we got Ross Connor, uh, another big name, Ken Heinzman. I already told you guys about my story with him. Reach out to some of these people while we're watching this. You guys network. I, we want to know what's going on. How are we going to be better? How are we going to make a dent in this industry? And how are we going to keep these next generations going and doing good quality decorative work? So I want you guys to spend some time with that while we're getting things. Jen, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> she holds it all together for us. She's she put like this whole thing together. idea of what the possibilities are um, you know you see how crisp they end up becoming we get some sealer on here you'll see that the, that the cement paste in the grout lines is really gonna pop so it's gonna open up opportunities this is what's never been done before this is brand new to the market the market needed it we needed to be able to leave decorative impressions in all finishes not just stamp concrete and with this product here we can do it now so the sky's the limit like I said if you guys we sell 90% of pretty much custom stencils versus our stock. That's how popular it is because it opens up the opportunity for the guys to be able to do stuff that they traditionally can't just afford in stamps. To make a stamp mold is a little pricey. So we're, we're earning a lot of projects. Instead of turning those people away because they don't like the price, we can, we can divert them over to this look here. So, you know, if you guys got line art, you go to your distributors or if you got a customer, Distributors grab that from them. We got in-house people. I got I've got it now producing out of here and in Springfield, Illinois. So we'll take your line art. We'll let you know if it's a yay or nay first, and then we'll if it's a yes, we'll come back with a quote to you. If you agree upon that, we will work on line art, send that over for approval. You approve it. We're gonna have it shipped out no later than three weeks out from the time of, of line art approval. You can kind of see the detail on the logo for Scott. That's why we wanted to use that. You see some of the newer stuff that's coming out. For cut, this is a custom. This is a part of our Celtic kit, our Lotus kit, and these kits come in 21-piece sets, so that you guys can play around on sites. We're also going to be coming out with some long runs of borders, so you can mass produce as well. Say you got a broom-finished driveway, but you wanted to do some stamp borders in it. Well, now you can come in with this. You can do borders without having to come in and set forms, pour, come back the next day, bring in a pump truck, pump out the squares. You can do it all in one shot now. You can run a texture mat over those or you can broom over them or what have you. So you can really kind of add a lot of versatility to your projects that you weren't able to do before. So what do you guys think overall? Beautiful. Like, awesome. It's an amazing look, isn't it? It's a neat thing. Grant, so. do you have to like, 
where they're laying now, do you guys have to clean those off, I guess? Do you rinse no, them I mean, yeah, you want to rinse them down, rinse wash them, down. them off, but even if the guys don't, you know, you want to kind of just, <coughs> if you roll them around a little bit, that, it'll off. flake off the surface. Um, but it doesn't hurt to spray a little liquid release on them if you're going to store them. Try to store them as flat as you can. That's the one thing that we did do developing this idea is I worked long and hard on a product that was durable and had memory. And that's what took me so long to get figured out. There's a lot of urethanes out there that don't have the memory. The way that we heat cure these, we really heat these things up. That's what gives it its memory. You can roll this up, shove it in your glove box, show up to the job, pull it out. Within about 10 minutes and most temperatures, it's just gonna come back to its natural state. That's because of the heat cure. So how it, how it cures out in that mold is how it will always come back to. And if you guys kind of yank on that stuff, you'll see how durable it is. You'll probably cut your hand before you break it. So. They should last you forever. I'd rather them break a little bit more, but we made a pretty good product. <laughs> so We're coming to you from the middle of Texas uh, where we can use anything that we want. So we're using the Pro Seal 650 here. Um, and again, whether we spray it, whether we roll it, completely up to you in these types of situations. But the same rules apply. Direct sunlight, you know, a hot day. You gotta, be, you got, you gotta consider all of those types of things before you apply your product. So again, I always recommend brick form, Solomon colors, we recommend coolest part of the day is the best time for sealing your concrete. Now again, the Poly Seal 650, as you saw with the Poly Seal 100, same product, same acrylic will be left on the concrete. It was just the carrier method. This is essentially a xylene based material versus an acetone based material. The percent solids, meaning the, the amount of acrylic that we're leaving behind on the concrete, is the exact same. It's a 19% solids. So it, it imparts a nice medium, maybe an initial high sheen, but ultimately it's a lower sheen material. Gives you that more natural look uh, in the application. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna roll some on. As you saw down there, we wouldn't have been able to roll it, and then we'll spray some here as well. And again, whether you use a hollow tip or, or a fan tip is completely up to what you're comfortable in doing. I prefer that perfect spray tip that we use with the fan tip, and I can manipulate the action just by my, my application uh, technique. And again, just to eliminate the, the overage or over coverage on the end of the spray tip. So Robbie here is going to take some. We're gonna roll out the, the border here first with uh, the material. Yeah, I got your bucket, boss. <laughs> You'll see the color that we used here is Onyx, which is a 4% loading of our 920 black. And you'll see that color jump so right back good. out at you. Huff it a little bit before you do it. <laughs> Give you 20 minutes to get that. Gotta do the taste test. Now you should be able, to, you're gonna spill off the back there. You should be able to uh, smell the difference too between the acetone and the xylene. Xylene tends to have that sweet smell to it. Acetone's maybe perhaps a little harsher. Another thing too, when you're rolling, these pans are kind of tough to work with. It's good to get a five gallon bucket and one of those paint strainers that hooks to the side. It's a lot easier, it'll save you a lot of time. If you're a roller, that's what you do. It'll, it'll save your time, your time drastically. Then you know the other thing I found too on the sand finish, it's always best to roll your first coat and then spray your second one so you know you get it all down to the pores and everything on the first coat. How often should you reseal if so, like a homeowner has to you? So the question is how often should you reseal? Anybody have any thoughts on that? How often you should reseal? Every year you Grab my I'll tell you every week. You know that that, que that question comes up a lot, but really it depends on it depends on where you're at, your UV exposure. Uh, in some cases, it's is your house southerly facing or northerly facing? You know what is getting most of the sun. Here we're on the north side of this building, and this this piece of concrete gets no sun throughout the day. If we're on the south side, it gets that that late you know fall uh, exposure. So that's really kind of an open-ended question. Is you guys point in, in parts of Utah, you're recommending every every uh, every year. There are so many factors. So really, it's a it's a visual touch. Robbie, what are you telling your customers? Um, so well, since I've been using the Poly Seal 650, um, I get about at least a good two three years out of you get it you get it put down right. You get good coats. 
and get that good mechanical bond. It, it lasts a long time. Okay, now Ravi comes from the Pacific Northwest, so he's got real, less sun exposure. Less less sun exposure um, in the the later end of the year, and he's got a lot of sun exposure in during the middle parts of the year. And he's got ex you know weather temperatures that are that are shifting. So every market's going to be a little bit different. You can see here though, with a nice coat of the uh, the Polyseal 650, it just causes that color to pop right back out. Again, with a sand finish, you don't want to have the candy coated look. You really just want to show and highlight the, the nice aggregate structure that we have here and, and the color pop behind it. Great, we're gonna, we're, as Rob's doing that, we want to kind of talk about this tip here. So this is a fan tip. Uh, fan tips sometimes for us, our traditional ways of spraying, we're kind of against it a little bit because we leave hard lines, but something that I'm seeing here that I'd like is being that he does have this constant air pressure hooked up to it, we are getting the right amount of pressure to where it's not really leaving a hard line. So Robbie's so used to, you can see Robbie's yeah. manipulating that thing and keeping it moving so he doesn't ever leave a hard line. But I have a feeling with that tip, Rob, you could probably just run some straight. Just give me a, just a real quick, let's see if it's leaving a hard line. It's not too bad, that actually. See, Grant, you could unhook the air hose and release some of the pressure and you're gonna get your hard okay, line. Okay, yeah, I don't want to. So <laughs> that's, I like what you got going here. So we're gonna do a little bit with that tip. There's also, he's got a conical tip here also too. That's what we would normally use with something like this. Well, we use an acetone resistant sprayer for the acetone based spray or sealer. Here, this is your straight solvent, a xylene based material. And for a second. So we use this sealer. You could also use that same spray can for this one, but you can't use vice versa. So something else, I was talking to somebody else here that does a lot of this and he brought up a good point. Um, you know, when you're sealing jobs like this, you know, sealer is just as important as everything else. Uh, we were talking about, you know, guys going in and kind of just, you got a bunch of guys out on your hip and trying to seal a job. Well, you got a guy over here cutting in edges and you got this guy spraying over here. When you go to do another coat, if, if you're not keeping the same consistency, you're loading up more material and you're gonna get a different look. You're gonna, you're gonna come back another day and see a different look. That's why drips are not good because that's more sealer. And when you're, if you're trying to keep a two coat system going, you wanna be consistent. So you want a guy cutting in and you want a guy that's coming, that's falling right with you with your sprayer. You wanna keep everything consistent. That's one thing about concrete, everything is about consistency. The guys that do the good work are the guys that have the eye for detail for consistency. And so you spend all that time with your exposures trying to get it consistent, you want to keep your sealers consistent. Uh, you're sending out your laborers, they don't really have much direction, they're just going to go out and start, you want to hone them in and explain why, because like we were talking, we, you can come back the next day, and matter of fact it was Ross, he says, I can see and I can tell what my guys did. And it's because they're over applying the material in certain areas and not others. So whatever you're doing, you want to keep it consistent. The guys are getting lazy and they're not pumping. They're, you're loading up material when you're doing it because you're trying to cover it in a smaller, smaller area. So you're loading it up. That so guys, fine mist right there is staying consistent. So guys, what we'll do, and then you see, he's still got his spray tip close to the ground, even though this material is more forgiving from a, a climate standpoint. What we're going to do here is we're going to finish this slab here. Lunch is ready. You'll be able to grab your lunch, take it inside, and eat. And then uh, after lunch, we'll finish with open discussion. The other thing that you'll see with the sealer, again, this is first coat, one nice even coat. Concrete being porous, you're seeing that it's absorbing at a slightly different rate. The second coat, the second light coat, will help to even that all out. Give you a nice even saturation. It's really good to get- They have so many good products. The stencils, oh my God, that is some cool stuff. Uh, we did a lot of stuff here. We did stencils. We did, uh, well, when I say we, it's they. <laughs> Poured concrete, did stencils, did, uh, did uh, a sand finish, different depths, did uh, ceiling, and uh, they did a day one demonstration. You guys have seen a little bit of that on my channel, but you will see a lot more of the day one. Uh, I was very impressed with that product, and uh, we're going to do a lot more of it. As you guys know, back in Texas, we have a lot of wind and we have a lot of heat. And day one is gonna be a game changer for us. So, like I said, you will see a lot more of that on our channel. Anyway, that's all I got for today. We'll see you next time. We are Texas Barnuminiums.